Yeah, let's meditate for a bit. When you focus on your breath, the question comes up, is it comfortable or is it not? You're the one who has to answer that question. Because you're making it comfortable for the sake of settling down. So you're the one who gets to choose. But if you're not very careful, if you're not very observant, it will be hard to settle down. Even if you decide, well, this is good enough. If you sit with it and the mind just does not want to stay, that's one of the questions where you're a little bit too hasty in deciding that it was good enough, and then you do a little bit more, try a little bit more to find the breath that really does feel good. Because the breath, when you do it right, can feel really satisfying all the way down inside. All the patterns of tension in the muscles, tension in the nerves. Breathe right into those patterns. Let them have some nourishment. And see if you've been overworking some parts of the body as you breathe. Certain muscles do all the work, others are freeloaders. Well, let the workers have, have their nourishment as well. In other words, when you survey something, make sure you survey it a couple of times. Don't just say, well, this is good enough and move on. Because that habit, the good enough and move on, starts getting ingrained. And you say, well, other people do it this way, it's okay, good enough for them, it should be good enough for me. That was not the Buddha's attitude. Remember, he studied with those at John's. What was good enough for them? He decided it was not good enough for him. That's why he moved on. So make sure you're good enough really is good enough. I was listening to a Dharma talk the other day. Someone saying that all you have to do is just be with your awareness in the present moment, and that's it. Don't think about anything. Don't analyze anything. Don't pass judgment on anything. Just be with that open awareness. That's it. That's the deathless. I mean, what it is, of course, is just being stuck on the aggregate of consciousness. This person claimed that it was unconditioned. It is very much conditioned. And if you satisfy yourself there, well, you can get a nice state of concentration going, maybe. But that's as far as it goes. And the wisdom that figures out that how, how this should be enough, it's not really wisdom. That your defilement stressed up is wisdom. So you have to be very careful. There are a lot of seemingly good places on the path, which are good as part of the path, but if you start taking them as the goal, then you're in trouble. So you want to develop this habit of trying to be really holding to high standards in terms of your precepts, in terms of your concentration, in terms of your discernment. Because nobody else is going to force you. You can listen to Dharma day in and day out, but when your standards are low, nobody can come in and pull them up for you. You have to ask yourself, do I really want to be satisfied with this? If there's something better, I should look for it. That attitude, that's what got the Buddha through. Remember, he called it being discontent with skillful qualities. Now, this doesn't mean you go around trashing your concentration. You take care of it, you look after it, you use it. But once you're well settled in, you should ask yourself, well, what more could there be? Where is there still some stress in here? How can I figure out what I'm doing that's causing that stress so I can stop? As you hold yourself to high standards, then you benefit. Because after all, our teacher, the Buddha, he held himself to very high standards, total awakening, total release. And he found that he wasn't disappointed. So we should always take that as our inspiration.